the domestication of animals was a crucial step in the success of humanity. Out of all the thousands of species we share our planet with, only a handful of them have fit the description for true domestication. The process of adapting wild organisms to live in close association with humans, often through selective breeding to provide benefits like food, labor, or companionship. In this video, we will take a look at the fossil record of the Mesozoic and select extinct species that may be good candidates for domestication based on seven different roles they would serve in human society. We'll imagine that we're playing a sort of city manager game that takes place in a world or timeline where a bunch of different animals from all periods of the Mesozoic exist in the world, and we need to choose the best options to maximize our efficiency for a semi-primitive human commune. Of course, bear in mind this video is going to be heavy on speculation and is just for fun. That being said, let's get into it. Most agree that the domestication of cats was a pretty cut and dry process. The increase of rodents, birds, and other pests on farmland was paralleled with an increased presence of wild cats. Over time, cats became increasingly reliant on human settlements for food and shelter, and humans were more than happy to have them around to get rid of the animals eating their crops. I think a small dromaeosaur would be the best choice here, more specifically an arboreal species, such as Microraptor. Small, agile, and equipped with grasping claws and a lightweight frame, Microraptor could be trained to catch small vermin like rodents or insects. Its arboreal lifestyle and gliding ability would make it efficient at covering ground in agricultural settings. Especially in orchards, stables, barns, and fields where climbing and aerial hunting skills are advantageous. Just as important as crops is livestock. They not only provide a crucial source of food, but also provide materials for making shelter, clothing, tools, glue, soap, the list goes on. A big part of the reason we have cows as livestock and not elephants is because large placental mammals are extremely limited in how many offspring they can produce per year. Dinosaurs, however, lay eggs and are not limited by this. Most large herbivorous dinosaurs could have laid well over two dozen eggs multiple times per year, and many hadrosaurine species raised their young just like mammals did. If humans become involved in this process, those young have a far greater chance at survival, at least until they're ready to be made into burgers. We want a dinosaur that'll be large enough to give us a lot of food, but not too large that we can't handle them. Sure, a sauropod might be able to feed a lot of people, but slaughtering them safely wouldn't be exactly practical. I think the premier choice here is a species of Hadrosauriform, and from this order of animals, I'm going to choose Oranosaurus. Oranosaurus has a leg up over its relatives in its tall dorsal spines. These bones could be used to make a variety of things such as tools, bone broth, fertilizer, animal feed, and even materials for musical instruments, jewelry, and other crafts. These dorsal spines also increase its surface area, and being as large as it is, the hide of the Oranosaurus gives us a higher yield for things like leather, blankets, clothing, etc. A standard beef cow will yield roughly 47% of its weight in meat around 570 pounds, or just shy of 260 kilograms. Oranosaurus was estimated to be on average 2200 kilograms, or nearly 5000 pounds. Though the dinosaur's streamlined build would have made it much leaner than beef cows. So we'll be conservative and estimate that after deboning and trimming a fatty, well-fed Oranosaurus, it would yield no more than 30% of its body weight in meat, or roughly 1700 pounds of meat. While dinosaurs can't give us milk, they can give us eggs. Hadrosaur eggs ranged anywhere between the size of a soft ball and the size of a soccer ball. Red jungle fowl, the ancestors of domestic chickens, only laid 10 to 15 eggs per year. It was only when humans selectively bred the hens that laid more eggs that we got modern chickens who lay almost 300 eggs per year. It would be a much longer and difficult process with Oranosaurus, but our dinosaur ranchers will replicate this process. While it may not be possible to get eggs every single day like with a coop full of chickens, Breeding to increase the number and size of eggs would certainly be advantageous. The same size that makes Oranosaurus a fantastic option for feeding the village makes it a difficult animal to manage. Being bigger means you need more food, so the Hadrosaurus size would require very large pastures. Now that we've determined our species of livestock, we ought to find another animal that can act as a livestock guardian. I think for our Oranosaurus, we're going to need a slightly bigger animal. And for this, I've chosen another duck-billed dinosaur, the Lambiosaurus. Though separated from Oranosaurus by tens of millions of years, Lambiosaurus would have lived a very similar lifestyle and potentially would have little issue integrating into their herd. With the largest specimens being 9 meters long and 4 to 5 tons, it would be more than capable of throwing down with some sizable theropods. 
but Lambiosaurus doesn't need to be a one-man army. More important than its size will be its hollow nasal crest, which it will use like a horn to alert the ranchers of danger and call for their aid. Of course, this dinosaur's size makes it just as dangerous to the human ranchers as it does to the predators. But tactics and understanding of these animals' behavior will develop over hundreds or even thousands of years. Humans by themselves can accomplish some pretty impressive feats of strength when working together. But beasts of burden like mules, oxen, and camels have all saved the backs of many a man throughout history. Here in our strange Mesozoic world, we've got plenty of big animals that could do the job. In fact, our Aranosaurus and Lambiosaurus would probably do well enough as beasts of burden, but I've got one animal in mind that I think would do pretty well, and it's not a dinosaur at all. Lysavishia, a dicynodont from the late Triassic, was the largest terrestrial non-dinosaur of the Mesozoic. Potentially weighing up to 9 tons, this robust therapsid was equal in mass to many elephants. The barrel-shaped body and robust pillar-like limbs are perfect for bearing some serious weight. Lysavishia could pull plows, carts, or logs across long distances. It consumed tough, fibrous Triassic vegetation, with a digestive system adapted to low-quality foraging, and grinding through tough plant matter like tree bark. Lysivicia would survive on plants that might not be useful for human consumption or other animals in the village. While we're not sure if Lysivicia was too smart, we do know that many Dicynodonts, like Lystrosaurus and Dinodontosaurus, were likely gregarious, so it's possible that Lysivicia could work in pairs and dramatically increase the power behind a cart or plow and their size does cause a few issues. The sheer size would make feeding and rearing these animals a lengthy process, but likely not much more so than elephants. Being this big would also make it troublesome to traverse difficult terrain. If they were being used to, say, transport a large amount of goods to other settlements, they would be relegated to established roads. Horses were absolutely instrumental in the advancement of human civilization. Thanks to their speed and ability to maintain a steady walk for much longer than us, the estimated arrival time for any trek or journey was chopped in half with a horse. While they can maintain a walking pace for days at a time, a horse can only gallop or run for a few miles before tiring. But in our case, the avian respiratory system of many dinosaurs will be a massive upgrade for transportation. While I thought about putting another hadrosaurine dinosaur here, I think that Gathamimus would be a perfect choice. Ostriches, our closest analog, can carry a maximum of 90 kilograms or 200 pounds, and are sometimes ridden by people. However, they can't carry a full-grown man for long due to their hollow bones, which could break easily running under that type of stress. Gathamimus weighed anywhere between 4 and 500 kilograms, stood 2 meters tall at the hips, and spanned 6 meters in length. Being a non-avian dinosaur, it also had hollow bones, but they were far more dense and wouldn't suffer from the same weakness as an ostrich. It's estimated they could have ran at speeds between 42 and 56 kilometers per hour, making it around the same speed as most horses. But their air sac-based avian respiratory system would allow these dinosaurs to travel at these high speeds for far longer than a horse. No animals in humanity's history have been such helpful hunting companions as dogs. Wolves' superior sense of smell helped us track down game over vast distances, and the superior lethality of our tools greatly increased the success for both species. In order to find a creature from the Mesozoic that can hold a torch up to the utility of hunting dogs, we ought to get as close to them as possible. For many of you, Dromaeosaurs like Deinonychus or Utah Raptor may be your first choice. No doubt, the Jurassic Park series imprinted this idea of pack hunting raptors into all of us at a young age. However, there is another group of theropods that may be a far better option, and that is Tyrannosaurids. Now, I know you're already thinking this, oh, yeah, madly, sure, we're gonna put a collar on a T-Rex and it's gonna help us hunt some deer. But hear me out. For many members of this group, we found pretty solid evidence for group behavior, more so than what we have for Deinonychus or Utah Raptor. Particularly three species, Albertosaurus, Despletosaurus, and Appalachosaurus. Tyrannosaurids, especially T. rex, are well understood to have some of the best senses of smell among theropods of the Mesozoic, with large olfactory bulbs estimated to contain around 620 to 670 olfactory receptor genes. Not quite the 1,000 found in most dogs, but much closer than any other theropod. Of course, so far we've only found these traits in much larger species, all of which probably don't need any help from humans to hunt. But one smaller species in particular stands out as a candidate to me, Timor Lengia a smaller genus of Tyrannosaur from roughly 90 million years ago in Uzbekistan. Detailed CT scans of Timorlengia's brain case reveal that it possessed a pretty sophisticated brain structure. Notably, Timorlengia had an elongated cochlea, meaning it had the ability to hear low-frequency sounds, which would be another advantage for hunting prey. 
Social behavior for the smaller species is more speculative, but no more than with a lot of other dinosaurs. We know that T-Rex had a brain to body weight ratio that was well above average for dinosaurs, and a well-developed cerebrum that suggests they were certainly very intelligent. I don't know if I believe the smart as a baboon claim, but considering animals like chickens can be trained to perform certain tasks, and T-Rex was probably smarter than a chicken, we can likely say that Timor Lingia would be capable of learning commands or what its human handlers would want from them, especially with food as a reward. However, even the smaller Tyrannosaurid is quite a bit larger than dogs. The best course of action for our early humans here is to raise Timor Lingia from the egg, building a bond with them by training them as early and as often as possible. This will be pretty similar to raising a tiger in the beginning, and it will take a few generations before there's a Timolengia whisperer, but Tyrannosaurs receiving parental care from their parents and, and potentially working together in adulthood provides a foundation to shoehorn ourselves into whatever social grouping they may have. While there isn't an official estimate for its speed, Timolengia was likely as fast, if not a little bit faster, than other theropods its size. Deinonychus and Dilophosaurus are both estimated to run at speeds between 30 to 40 kilometers per hour. I think it's safe to say that Timor Lingia may have pushed closer to a max speed of 35 to 45 kilometers per hour, pretty close to the top speed of most dogs. Dinosaurs the size of elk or deer could be pretty easily dispatched with a solid crunch to the neck, preserving most of its hide for the humans to use. While bigger game like hadrosaurs could be worn down over a distance until it's ready to be finished off by humans with spears or arrows. This is where the Timor Lingia benefits from the domestication, as with the help of humans, they'd be able to take down prey items far larger than they would be able to on their own. While any of the animals I've listed so far could be seen as companions to their owners or handlers, what we're talking about here is a pet you could keep in your home or backyard. And there's a near infinite number of potential candidates. Really, our only requirements are be small enough to handle without causing serious or fatal injuries, be easy and relatively inexpensive to keep, and be relatively docile. So really, you just gotta kind of find animals that might fit these parameters and pick your favorite. For those of you who have been watching the channel for a while now, you'll know that I'm partial to lizards. So for this category, I've chosen a unique reptile that's not a dinosaur at all, and that is Draponosaurus, an arboreal reptile from the Triassic that was roughly the size of an iguana. It has really unique anatomy, like fused vertebrae at the end of a prehensile tail that forms a hook perfect for holding on to branches while traversing to the next. They also have this really funny looking arrangement on their forearms, like their ulna is a big disc and their radius is perpendicular to their humerus. And of course they have this massive claw, which is theorized to have been used to chip away at tree bark to reveal insects underneath like an anteater. I've chosen this animal for no reason other than the fact I think it looks really cool and would be awesome to just sort of look at in a massive terrarium in my house. I don't know, I just, I just find it very interesting. If you'd like to hear about some more options for prehistoric pets, you can check out my friend the Overseer's video on which dinosaurs would make the best house pets. All these animals are just some of my picks, and I'm sure that many of you have other creatures in mind for many of these roles, so feel free to let me know about them in the comments. And of course, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, or dislike it, the algorithm doesn't know the difference. This is my first jab at a video of this kind, sort of meant to supplement my bigger projects. But if this does well, I'm thinking I may do something similar for other time periods. Anyway, thanks for tuning in guys, and I'll catch you next time.